In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, heal the hearts of your faithful, and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant that by the same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever enjoy His consolations. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. St. Ignatius of Loyola, pray for us. Three sins. We have been meditating on the principle and foundation, that is, the plan of God and the essential truths. Now, St. Ignatius proposes us to meditate on sin, because sin is what is diametrically opposed to the principle and foundation. This meditation is divided into three parts, the sin of the angels, the sin of Adam and Eve, and the sin of a hypothetical person. Preparatory prayer. The preparatory prayer is to ask grace of God, our Lord, that all my intentions, actions, and operations may be directed purely to the service and praise of His Divine Majesty. Composition of place. Here, it is to be noted that in a visible contemplation or meditation, as for instance, when one contemplates Christ our Lord, who is visible, the composition will be to see with the sight of the imagination the corporeal place where the thing is found which I want to contemplate. I say the corporeal place as, for instance, a temple or a mountain where Jesus Christ our Lord is found according to what I want to contemplate. In an invisible contemplation or meditation, as here on the scenes, the composition will be to see with the sight of the imagination and consider that my soul is imprisoned in this corruptible body and all the compound in this valley as exiled among brute beasts. I say all the compound of soul and body. Petition. It is to ask God our Lord for what I want and desire. The petition has to be according to the subject matter. That is, if the contemplation is on the resurrection, one is to ask for joy with Christ in joy. If it is on the passion, he is to ask for pain, tears, and torment with Christ in torment. Here, it will be to ask shame and confusion at myself, seeing how many have been damned for only one mortal sin, and how many times I deserve to be condemned forever for my so many sins. The body of meditation. First, the sin of the angels. Angels are immortal and are pure spirits, and they have the highest intellectual power among creatures in such a way that some had mistakenly believed that they could equal the perfection of God. Their number is without measure. Then I looked, and I heard around the throne and the living creatures and the elders the voice of many angels, numbering myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands. Revelation 5.11 Their power is extraordinary. Just in one night, the angel of God killed all the firstborn in Egypt. At midnight, the angel of the Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh, who sat on his throne, to the firstborn of the captive who was in the prison, and all the firstborn of the cattle. Exodus 12:29. Only one angel killed 180,000 of the army of Sennacherib to deliver Jerusalem from his power. Sirach 48:21. The Lord smote the camp of the Assyrians and his angel wiped them out. Their beauty and majesty mistake them with God himself. St. John expresses this. I, John, am he who heard and saw these things. And when I heard and saw them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who showed them to me. Revelation 22.8 Tobit fell upon his face when he saw the angel Raphael, Tobit 12.16. 
But a third part of them were condemned to hell eternally because they followed Lucifer. Their sin was one of pride. They refused subjection to God. And God did not spare them. St. Peter says, God did not spare the angels when they sinned, but cast them into hell. 2 Peter 2.4 Also, they were deprived of all knowledge that comes from grace. Their will became obstinate in evil. What happened with all their beauty? What happened with all their wisdom? What happened with all their power? Everything lost at once. Looking at the scene of the angel, St. Ignatius asks me to reflect over me, saying, Angels went to hell for one sin, and how many times I have deserved to be condemned forever because of my many sins. Second, the sin of Adam and Eve. Great knowledge. Adam and Eve had great knowledge poured into their minds by God. Control of the passions by reason. Passions are emotions in the soul, such as anger, fear, hatred, desire, joy, and sorrow. Adam and Eve would not become angry unless they wanted to. They would never be afraid of anything unless they wanted to. Freedom from suffering and death. There would be no sickness, weakness, weariness, or bodily discomfort. Dominion over the created world. God blessed them, and God said to them, Have dominion over every living thing that moves upon the earth. Genesis 1, 29 Friends of God, they could speak with God. They could hear the sound of the Lord God moving about in the garden at the breezy time of the day. But in their foolishness and selfishness, man and woman, Adam and Eve, considered that they had no need of God. They thought they could be gods by themselves and disobeyed the Lord's commandment. Except the tree of knowledge of good and bad, from that tree you shall not eat. The moment you eat from it, you are surely doomed to die. Genesis 2.17 However, they did it, and God called man and said to him, Where are you? He had given me more than a proof of such a love. When he asked to our first parents, Adam and Eve, Where are you? In this question, we can see the wounded love of our Heavenly Father. Also, and above all, in this question, we can see the grief of God for all what sins means for us, to humanity. Where are you? How far you are? Sin put man into an infinite distance from God. When man sinned, he hid himself from the presence of God. After sin, in nature, something became broken. It was the breakdown, the collapse between body and spirit between parents and children, between brothers, between societies, between nations, and so forth. But worst of all, it was the rupture between the creature and the creator. The human beings lost the original unity and harmony in which they were created, that had produced a disorder of cosmic reach, since the whole of the universe lost balance breaking bonds with its foundation, which is God the Creator, all these things just for one mortal sin. We cannot forget that one mortal sin, only one, deserves for us eternal damnation. Although sin is something temporal, something that happens in just a moment, sin is above all a free and voluntary action against God or against His law. And God is eternal. Consequently, the offense is eternal, and the punishment is eternal. Why did you do such a thing? God asks this to Adam and Eve. Their answer was too much less than sufficient. Adam's answer was, 
The woman whom you put here with me, she gave me fruit from the tree, so I ate it. And in turn, Eve said, The serpent tricked me into it, so I ate it. Two answers that put together could not convince the poorest jury we could find today anywhere in the world. How could they convince their very creator? Both of them were trying to blame some other one while they were obviously absolutely guilty. Nobody does what he or she does not want to do. Sin is not a mistake. Sin is not an error. Sin is a free and voluntarily action against God's law. Why did you do such a thing? Behold the consequences, consequences that will touch all your sons and daughters. Because of the sin of our first parents, man is conceived without the state of grace. Because of their sin, man no longer has control of his desires. The harmony in which they had found themselves, thanks to original justice, is now destroyed. The control of the soul's spiritual faculties over the body is shattered. Because of the original sin, harmony with creation is broken. Visible creation has become alien and hostile to man. Finally, the consequence explicitly foretold for this disobedience will come true. Man will return to the dust, for out of it he was taken. Death makes its entrance into human history. We can imagine the experience of the very first death, the death of Abel. How Eve had tried to awake his wounded son, but nothing. Death had appeared for the very first time and would continue showing up. Looking at our first parents, St. Ignatius asked me to reflect on myself saying, they deserve all these consequences for one sin, and how many times I have deserved more because of my many sins. Third, the sin of a hypothetical person. St. Ignatius says, consider also countless others who have been lost for fewer sins than I have committed. Is it possible to be condemned for just one mortal sin? Yes, because mortal sin destroys charity in the heart of man by a grave violation of God's law. Yes, because mortal means full knowledge and complete consent. It presupposes knowledge of the sinful character of the act, of its opposition to God's law. In the psychology of the sinner, we can see that he would like this time of committing sin to last forever. If it were possible, and because of this, if God calls this person at that moment, he receives what he wants, which is to be eternally separated from God. Because where sin is, God is not. Mortal sin deprives us of communion with God. Therefore, it makes us incapable of eternal life, and the privation of this life is called eternal punishment. Looking at this person, old or very young, who died after his first mortal sin, St. Ignatius asks me to reflect on myself saying, he deserved eternal punishment for one sin. And how many times have I deserved to be condemned forever because of my many sins? Colloquy. The colloquy is made properly by speaking as one friend speaks to another, or as a servant speaks to his master, now asking some favor, now accusing oneself for some misdeed, or again making known his trials to him and seeking his advice concerning them. Imagine Christ our Lord before you, hanging upon the cross. Speak with him of how, being a creator, he then became man, and how, possessing eternal life, he submitted to temporal death to die for my sins. Then I shall meditate upon myself and ask, What have I done for Christ? What am I now doing for Christ? 
what ought I do for Christ? Conclude with the Our Father.